the two-piece bow staff or the two-piece bow, bow means staff, so it's a long martial arts staff. This is a child size or it would also double as a Joe staff, which is the medium size martial arts staff. I want to give you a quick review of what you can do with these, what you probably shouldn't do with these, kind of the, the pluses and the minuses in case you were thinking about investing some money in a two-piece bow staff. This is something that you would have at your house. It's something you take to tournaments. It's something you could travel with because it breaks in half. It's just like if you look there, if you've ever seen a pull cue that breaks down, people take them in a fancy case. They open the case and they simply screw it together. And you can see here, it's got a nice long screw, which is very important because that's gonna give it a better connection between the two pieces. It's just a little bit to screw it in and then it gets pretty tight. I also like that it has the balance point kind of built in as the two pieces come together. You have these two sides right in the middle, and then you have a martial arts weapon, either a practice tool, something you can use. Like I said, you can take it with a tournament. You can take it with you on vacation. If you're like me and you use martial arts weapon spinning or use training as kind of a meditation, like a moving meditation, that's what I call it, moving meditation, then now you have this option. But let me show you some of the other things that I really like about these. I'm gonna show you different sizes too. If you wanna see what these cost, I put a link below. It's that first link, the martial arts store. It's a new item that we're carrying in that martial arts store, and they're not that expensive. It's a really good value, but it doesn't do everything. I'm gonna talk about what you should not do with these in just a little bit, but I wanna show you some other reasons why I really like these. The first one is, especially if you have the shorter one, you can now use this as a um, collie stick, martial arts scream stick. And now you would have, yeah, <laughs> now you have a, and we're going to talk about that. You, you make a joke, the guy couldn't, you know, for self-defense, you don't have time to screw it together. I, let me just say this from the start. I'm going to tell you why this is not a self-defense weapon. This is a personal training tool. This is a fun thing. This is a way to get in some um, extra time, spinning, training, practicing, when you have free time, but you're not gonna be striking this against things. But you can practice those collie strikes, all the different collie strikes, all the things that you can do. Collie is that martial art using this short fighting stick, sometimes called a scream of sticks or a knee sticks. This you'll see is about the length of one of my collie sticks. So this does fit as a collie stick. I know you're just kidding. Um, uh, but but that's a really good point. You bring up a really good point. These, you know, there are things that you can do and things that you can't do. One of the things you can do, though, is have something with you. Now you practice both styles, two styles, one style being the uh, bow staff, or like I said, in this case, this is more, this would be like uh, perfect for a shorter person or a person not as tall as me. It comes up, it's almost exactly the perfect length from a Joe staff. So if you wanted to practice Joe, this would be you know, the perfect practice, uh, take it with you anywhere you go, you know, martial arts training, practice with a Joe, or if you have low ceilings, this is a great way to practice. Maybe you're still in COVID shutdown. I know it's still shut down, locked down, a lot of places in Europe, some places here in the United States still, up in Canada. Now you have an indoor spinning training tool you do everything with this one that you can do with that longer you know bow staff long martial arts weapon and then the third thing and this is one of the things that is personal passion of mine i know not everybody's into it but i love and not because of the movie so much i just like the concept or the idea of the double bladed lightsaber right from that from the star wars movies darth maul's weapon and so in this case you know you have Darth Maul's double-bladed lightsaber, you have about the same length. Maybe you're into saber fighting, or you do cosplay or whatever, you're getting ready for Comic-Con or whatever they're called, Star, Star Wars Con, I don't know. I think it's all virtual anymore anyway. But you, you want something to have with you to train, or you're stuck inside, like I said, you can't get outside. So just like a double-bladed lightsaber, and again, I'm sure you're not gonna be screwing it, unscrewing it like that, but now you can practice almost like two you know, two swords, like you would use 
the Chinese Dao, you know, a lot of the, the katana, uh, the moves. This is that Obi Annie move that you'd see in those Star Wars films. So now, you know, you got a third weapon. You've got a sword, and this is, this is shorter than most swords. This is about the length of a machete, which is what you would find in Kali martial arts or Eskrima Arnis. You can practice your Sinawali. You know, you can push yourself, break up the monotony of being stuck inside all day. If you're on a long trip, you get home, you're back in the hotel room, whip these out. This can pack inside uh, most regular size suitcase. So this is the shorter one. And I wanted to announce a comp, I forgot, I forgot to mention this. Hello, it's good to see you. If you are a member of this online dojo community, the virtual dojo community, this new thing that we're growing, a member either here on YouTube, some of you have already joined as a member on YouTube, I appreciate you very much, or you're a member at Patreon, some of you Patreon members, appreciate you so much, or if you've gone to pasquinelli.com and joined there as a member, sent me an email, join the mailing list. I consider you to be a virtual member of the Quantum Martial Arts, Quantum Martial Arts Virtual Dojo. You're entered to win. So all you have to do is enter that con uh, contest. Good afternoon, it's good to see you. Um, and you're entered to win. I'm gonna make a decision April 15th. I'm gonna put all the names on a piece of paper, put them into a box, shake them up, have one of my kids reach in there, pull a name out, and whoever they pull out will win one of these double or uh, double blade lightsabers, one of these two piece bow staffs. Now this is the shorter one, like I said, perfect length for a Joe staff. You can also do all the spins. You can do the Joe staff style spins. You can practice all your Joe striking moves. You can practice all that. You cannot strike this hard against stuff and you're gonna see it's very fancy, it's very slick. It's kind of a, almost like a laminated wood. It is real wood, as you can see, it's solid wood. But it's, this is not a self-defense staff. This is not a fighting staff. This is a fun, break up the monotony, stuck inside. You see it has that nice metal, two pieces there. I mean, you could use that for self-defense, obviously, right, if you had to defend yourself. But the point is, this is for, this is to give you another option. You ask me all the time, you know, especially if you live in a place where shipping, I just shipped one to Canada last week and the shipping for a full size bow cost more, more money than um, the bow cost itself, like three times more because of shipping prices. And then, you know, all of the, the hard part of getting things through customs and stuff. And I know a lot of you are, are struggling with finding something that you can can have shipped, and I think that's one of the greatest benefits of these uh, two-piece weapons, is now you're not paying for an overpriced uh, shipping container, right? So I can ship these for a lot less money, and if you go to the link below, you can see what these costs are not that expensive, and with shipping, this cuts down the cost from that long box. I mean, the boxes come like this because it's a seven-foot staff, or a six-foot staff, six, 72 inches. So this is the shorter one. Let me show you kind of the next size up, which is the most common one, I think. The one that most people would value. And this is gonna be more, comes like this. They're separated so they don't stick together with that laminate. Oh, it's good to see you too, Phil. We're talking about the two-piece bow and how you can use it as a staff or a double-bladed lightsaber, if you're into that kind of thing. You can use it, um, and you can learn how to fight with two swords at once. Right? You can practice this up. You can change your hand positions. You're fighting this way. This is all valid, you know, martial arts style striking, fighting. You can also use it as the collie sticks. Now you've got, you know, three weapons in front one. You've got the short sword, you've got the long bow staff, and then, or, you know, bow, the long martial arts staff, and then you have collie sticks or screamer sticks. There's that new movie that just came out. It's out right now. We're gonna watch it tonight, I think. The kids and I are gonna watch, it's called Raya and the Last Dragon. And in the trailers for this, it's a cartoon movie, it's a Disney thing. But the, the little girl who has to save the people or whatever, find a dragon, I don't know what it's about. I just saw that she was wearing the two collie sticks. 
And I thought, you know, that's one of my, pa I've always been passionate about Kali martial arts, Filipino martial arts, Eskrima Arnis, whatever you want to call it. But here's an option, right? And again, this is not a self-defense weapon, but look how long this is. And this is the perfect size bow. Now you have something you can practice with at the house. It's almost, you know, it's a perfect weight. If you go to tournaments, if you're a martial artist who likes to do that kind of thing, and you're trying to, or, you know, it's just a personal interest. You want something that's super lightweight. You can hear how fast it goes. All of the different training, all the tricks that you do with this two, um, you know, double bladed lightsaber, keep calling it that, the uh, bow staff, the long martial arts staff. Maybe you do the Indian style, the Silambam. You can do it all with this, then you get tired of doing that, or like me, you don't get tired of it. You're ready, you know, you do 20 minutes of one, and then you switch over, you unscrew it, and now you, oh, I'm glad to have you here. Then you unscrew it, we're talking about the two-piece bow, and I said earlier, if you are a member of this virtual dojo, Quantum Martial Arts, my online virtual do dojo, the thing that we're all doing here together, hello from Sunny PA, all you have to do is be, be a member on YouTube here, be one of my Patreon members, or go to pasquinelli.com. Go to pasquinelli.com. There's a little contact me box in the bottom. Fill that out. So you don't even have to pay anything. You can be a paying member here, you can be a paying member at P Patreon, or you can just be one of the guys, girls, who support me by watching these videos, who go to my website, scroll through, read those things, and learn from me there. And I will enter you on April 15th. I'm gonna pull a name out of a hat, or out of a box, probably. And whichever name I pull, I don't care where you live, I'm gonna find a way to get this to you. And I've done this in the past. I've sent out um, lots of collie sticks. I've sent out fans. Um, it's been a couple years, though. It's been since before COVID, right? So we've slowed down a little bit with COVID, but I wanna really build this virtual uh, martial arts school. So you will enter to win if you are a member. Now, you have this, you can start to practice your uh, Sinawali, all the different patterns. You know, you practice singular strikes. You practice all of the different types of martial arts techniques that you do with shorter weapons. And then, with this one, if you wanted to, I would, or I do, you practice, you know, if I'm on the road, if I'm training or traveling, and I can't carry a big six-foot bow on the plane, or if I'm driving somewhere, or if I'm going with someone else, or I'm on a train, and I don't have that ability, now I can bring this with me, and I have an option to practice all the different styles of martial arts that I find interesting and exciting. And as I said earlier with the other one, you can also turn this into, if you're into Star Wars lightsaber, it's called um, saber dueling, saber fighting, Saber just being the sword. And then some people get into um, double-bladed lightsaber, which, you know, is that light staff that Darth Maul used. And then, you, you know, you can practice that. All those different techniques, all the things that you can do there. You just pull it apart, unscrew it. And that's what one of the things I like about this the most is that it has that long fastener right there, that long screw that goes into the other side to make, so it doesn't wobble and it doesn't feel like it's gonna break. And like I said before, this is not self-defense. I'm not gonna smash the bags with this thing. It's kinda like, here went the other one. It's kinda like a pull cue. If you've ever been around billiards or pull cues, you know, uh, people get really into it. They buy a fancy stick and it always comes in two pieces in a little carrying case. It's the same concept, probably made by the exact same company that makes some of the better pull cues. But that's all it is, two pieces. But if you, if, if again, the, re the reason I wanted to do this is because I do get this question from you a lot. Uh, what do you think about a two-piece bow? And I said, it's been a long time since I had them. Um, it, and it has, probably been 20 years since they first came out and uh, for, since I first got one. And back then, they certainly weren't this nice. Same idea, but it looks like, you know, 20 years of innovation or 20 years of improvement, I'm sure 
they figured out a thing or two about how to make these more stable. And it feels like one piece. When that's screwed in all the way, that feels like any other toothpick bow. And it's called a toothpick because it's skinny on one side and then skinny on the other side, thicker in the middle. So it looks like a gigantic toothpick. But like I said, or and, if you are looking for, you know, something to do inside because you're stuck inside still, or you want something to travel with, hopefully we're all flying and traveling again soon. Now you have just an incredible option because it's not one weapon, it's not two weapons, it's at least three weapons. And then, you know, on this one especially, if you want to, you can become a fourth weapon, which is a walking stick. You can practice or the hanbo, the Japanese hanbo, which is the shorter stick. You know, so it's about that length. You can even, if you wanted to, make that the hammer side, and now you've got your shillelagh, right? Practice your shillelagh strikes, the Irish fighting stick. It's all the same kind of thing. I mean, how famous are all the movies with the, uh, where the guy's busting a pull cue or a girl busts a pull cue over someone's head in a movie in the bar fight. But, you know, it's basi that's basically what this is. There's just no chalk on the end, <laughs> right? You probably could. You could chalk it if you wanted. But so this is, this is the average link staff. This one's, and the links are below. If you want to see what these cost, you know, what they're, um, what it would be with sh for shipping if they ship it to you. And like I said, if you enter to win, if you're a member or are you a member of Patreon or the new, I, I made a YouTube membership thing. They allowed me to do that. Um, keep asking me anyway. I didn't know how to do it until this past week. And then, uh, or you can just get on my website, pascoonoy.com and see what these are. Uh, enter, become a member, virtual member of the virtual dojo, quantum martial arts. And then it doesn't even cost you a dime. You don't even have to pay anything. Your participation, you're working out with me is enough. But this is the long one. Okay. And I haven't had, I just, these came in the mail uh, earlier in the week. They've been in my truck, been driving around with them, waiting to get them out. I finally had a minute and I thought I'm going to open them with you so we can see these together. All right. So this is, and they come in different colors. So I got kind of a variety. I think that one, the last one is like mahogany. Maybe, maybe this is my, I don't know my woods. You probably know better than I do, but this one, look at that. The fastener on this one is rounded, which I guess, oh, it is on the ones too. But it's, I mean, it's, it's a little, each one is really long. It's got to be probably an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter. And that's enough when you screw it together to take all the wobble out of the middle and make it super uh, secure, stronger. I can feel already this one's a little bit heavier and... Look at that, look how much taller that is. I mean, now we're, now we're talking about like a Japanese, or not a Japanese, like a Japanese Najinata, like a, you can practice a, a spear type weapon, or like the longer uh, Chinese sta uh, bow staffs, not bow staffs, Chinese staff, or a little bit long, some of them are a little bit longer. Or, you know, you, you might just be a taller person if you're, Six 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 four. This is the this is a better size for you than a six foot staff. And now you're able to do everything that you would with the other one. I'm trying to whip it over my head in my limited space. But a great travel staff. I love the weight. I, like I said, I just whipped it out. I, I haven't touched touched it until just now, but I can tell it feels a lot heavier. This one is going to be longer, much longer than a collie stick would be, or an Escrima stick or an East stick. And I'll show you how we measure usually from the tip of the finger until right about here, in the middle of the, the shoulder joint. So this is obviously ridiculously long, but you can still practice, right? You can still practice those basic Sinawali patterns. You can practice your angular stripes. You can practice all the things. This would, for a lot of people, be a perfect size hanbo for me. This becomes a really effective sword lengthwise. I can practice the katana, practice your kin, practice all your slicing techniques.
thrusting, blocking, moving, and you know, break up, break up the monotony of your training. If you're stuck in the house and your ceilings are tall enough for the longer one, or any of these sizes are perfect. The shortest one I think is probably the best for most people. And then, um, you know, this longer size is better for a taller person. Or if you're really good with one size and you want to, you know, practice in, uh, being, being fluent or being able to use any size stick for self-defense, you know, whether it's the bow or the Joe, you know, and, and um, if you like the Star Wars movies and you're on the, the Sith side, you're on the dark side, you want to learn how to use that double blade lightsaber, I suppose there are some good guys that use it or something. I don't know. But now you can learn how to fight with two sticks, you know, at the same time, change into the hand position, change one, and then you're fighting like the, a Jedi who uses two, like an Ahsoka Tano or whomever else. You can, you can tell I don't know all the names. I just know a couple here and there. Because I'll see something, I'll say, oh, that's cool. They're doing this motion or that motion. They're using, their style is more uh, Indian martial arts, or their style is more Japanese, or their style is more the Chinese style, Tai Chi sword, or the Tao, or they're, you know, they're doing more broadsword. And then most of them are like just a blended style. But then, you know, they whip it together. They don't screw it in for like six minutes. It doesn't really, it doesn't take six minutes. It's like, you know, 15 seconds or something. But then you make it tight and then you're done. And again, I can't tell you how good this feels because it's just, it's very sturdy. It's very heavy. You can practice all the things you would practice with your regular bow, except striking. Don't hit this against anything or you're going to break it. That's all I guess. I don't, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not like absolutely sure, but I like it enough that I'm not going to smash it against one of these bags and prove myself right. But you can still practice your striking. You can practice this traditional style, striking, thrusting, blocking, blocking. You can practice all that with this. And then you're done with bow. Take it apart and work. Kali, Eskrima, Arnis, whatever you want to call it, Filipino style martial arts, where you're using shorter sticks to fight. Practice this for another 20 minutes and then put one down. Use the last one. Practice faster and faster. It's been a while since I do. I love that feel. It's hard, right? And then you can... If you've ever done kendo, it looks familiar. If you haven't done kendo, you're like, what in the world is he doing? I'm working on speed. I want to hit you first. I want to hit you faster. You can do that. Watch your shoulders balloon and explode in power and strength by doing those exercises. Or you can do, you know, maybe, maybe that Aikido style. Or, you know, maybe you practice your... Um, can't do it with this one. I did it with a shorter one. Practice the Joe style. So, um, yeah, you know, what's interesting. I've been watching all these different stick fighting. There are, you know, I see guys fight with this a lot. This is very Irish. Blocking, 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 coming down on top. And then in the very last moment, boom, there's so many different ways to fight with a stick. It's very fascinating to me. I just absolutely love it, and I appreciate your being training with me so we can learn all this stuff together. Oh, um, Phil, so glad you asked me how to strengthen your wrist. I'm going to show you first with, with these, but yesterday I was thinking, um, it's been a while since I did a wrist strengthening video, and I wanted to show you some of the things. I'll see what I have here close. Just going to run through it real quick at the end here. Um, cool. Practicing in the Fern Forest. What I want you to do, though, I want to send these to somebody. I have three. I have three on April 15th. I'm going to give one of them to you. If you're entered, if you are a member of the virtual dojo, and the way to become a member is down below. It says, um, join, or 
you've already joined on Patreon or go to Patreon and join. There's several different options, extremely inexpensive to help me keep the lights on, help me keep these going. And then, um, thanks Wilson. And then the third way is just go to pasquinelli.com, P-A-S-Q-U-I-N-I-L-L-I.com. All that's in the description, by the way. Pasquinelli.com, on the bottom it says, send me a message or join or something. And then, um, you know, I'll send this on April 15th. I'm gonna take all those names, print them out, cut them up, stick them in a paper or in a box, and I'm gonna send these out to somebody. Then that, that's one of the reasons I like these so much. This, and look how tall that is. If I shipped it like this, it would cost me, if I shipped it anywhere here in the States, it probably cost me 30, 40 bucks. If I shipped it out of the States, if I shipped it out to Canada, I, I tried last week. I looked at the price, it was 80 to to $100 and more, depending on how fast they wanted to do. The cheapest option was 80 bucks. That's more than these things cost. You can see the link below what they really cost. And when I take it apart, now I don't have to put it in an oversized shipping box. It's that, it's that long. So the box is this big and it's super duper lightweight. This probably weighs it feels like maybe a pound and a half to two pounds at most. Those, uh, the six foot, the regular size bow, that probably feels, this one feels like a little over a pound. And then the shorter one, the one that doubles as a Joe or a shorter person or a kid's bow comes up to about here. That's really light, that's about a pound. So this cut in half by a pound is less, yeah, John, but it's a lot less if you can cut it in half, that's the whole point. That's why I like this option. Right, I'd love to, I'd, and the way I am, I mean, I want an oak bow, I want a white oak bow, a red oak bow, I want metal, I want all the different metals, I want steel, I want, I just like a variety, right? And every day, one that I would carry every day, if I had to carry for self-defense, I would want white oak or red oak, some kind of oak, some kind of hard wood that's light enough, fast enough, or even rattan. You can see all those links um, in that first story, you can see what those are. But if you're looking for an indoor training option, if you're looking for train at home option, and if you're looking for something that gets you the bang for the buck, you get more weapons than just a bow. You get a bow, you get a uh, sword, and you get uh, collie sticks at least, and then maybe a hanbo or a uh, uh, Irish fighting stick, a shillelagh. It doesn't have that big, big knuckle on the end. It doesn't have the big hammer on the end, but it kind of does. I mean, that's a that's a this side is really hard. That side will sting you. That side will smash your, your eyes in. Uh, the only thing, like I said, I was going to say this at the beginning. The only thing I would not do with these is hit them against something. And it's not for that. It's for, for uh, spinning, practicing the basics, practice a kata or a pumse or a form, whatever you want to call it. If you're into that kind of thing, use it as a double blade, a lightsaber. Use that. Let's talk about grip strength. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this one, just for an example, and I took it apart so you could see, so I don't have to get down on my hands and knees. From here, I'm just gonna lift it up and down. Now this is super duper light. If it were together, I can show you that. Let me use the, the shorter one, because you can do this with your bow or your Joe. And if your ceiling isn't high, sit on your knees. Um, sit like, either sit like you're in meditation. If you, I, I meditate like that, but. It's just as simple as this, just up. Yeah, there I got room. Up and down to the side. Exercise number one. Number two, to the front and back. And then the key is, don't move this arm. Do this, do this, 30 seconds, do this, 30 seconds, and then back, I know I was gonna run into it, back for 30 seconds. Then, that's 30, 30, 30, 90 seconds, and then you can change, you'll probably wanna change hands because you'll burn it out. And then when you go back, always do both hands equally, you're gonna bring it in, over your head, and around, and then back. You're gonna do this for 30 seconds. All of this will strengthen and stretch your hands and your forearms. Nice thing about this is that this is building strength for the weapon that you're using, for the bow. Then, when you have room, you're gonna practice pulling it in. I might have to look at this one. I haven't used this weight before. It's a lighter weight. But all you're doing is this motion.
pulling it in, pulling it in. And so from here, I'm going to pull it into my face, which is good because if you don't catch it, it's going to hit you in the face, which means you're going to catch it. You're going to catch it or at least stop it. But that's good training. You need that kind of training. Just pulling it in, pulling it in, pull it in. And then to continue strengthening, I'm going to take you on a little walk. To continue strengthening your wrist. Let me see what I have over here. Pull-ups really strengthen your wrist. But let me show you something else. All right, you still with me? A bucket of sand. Now, I live in Florida where there's sand everywhere, but this is just play sand that you buy at the store. You're just gonna squeeze, put your hand in it, squeeze. So you just go down, squeeze, down, squeeze. Now that squeezing, the sand's gonna fall out and it's gonna drop, but you're gonna squeeze. And then second, you're gonna put your hand in like the beak. I don't know if you can see that. You're gonna put it in like the beak of a bird and then open, down and open. So you're going in and open. And so the, the sand on the side is gonna resist your hands. Now, because it's sand, I'm gonna lift you back up, don't get nauseous. Because it's sand putting resistance, it's going to strengthen all the muscles in your forearm, your hands and your wrist. See how thick your wrists will get? But it's all gonna get stronger. Now, if you don't have sand or a bucket of sand, take a rubber band. If you go to the grocery, a lot of times the vegetables come with a thicker rubber band, like the broccoli or asparagus. Get two or three of those. Start with one, put it around your fingers, and then practice opening. Open. You need opening and closing. You need extension, con contraction. Is that right? Extensors and flexors. You need flexion. You need to close them, and you need to open them. Closing, opening, closing, opening. So you need to have both of those. Now closing, if you don't have sand, a, let me see if I can find one. Just some, some cloth, some cloth will do. A, this is just a, one of the kids um, uniforms, but you can take that and you just squeeze that closed, right? Squeeze it squeeze it that's like the sand and then get it wet and then practice wringing it out and wringing it you've, you've seen that in old kung fu movies there's a reason why we do that it's going to start to build but it's that pull and squeeze now here's the rule of everything you can overwork the muscles but you can also underwork everything don't worry about the overwork so much don't spend hours doing it do it for 30 seconds at a time squeeze Squeeze, rice is perfect. Squeeze, rice, beans, pebbles. Um, and like that play sand is the is super fine sand. Go from play sand to coarse sand, which you would use to make cement or, or concrete. And then move up to uh, beans, move up to, yeah, right. And, and the wax on, wax off, that was for blocking, right? And that works, do that, practice that. Wax on, wax on, paint the fence, paint the fence. And then he's blocking, he's blocking. But this is the same thing. And he, I think he had them, you know, cleaning things by hand. In the old, the old dojo, the old dojang, dojang is a Korean word, at the end of the class, you would get down on your hands and knees and you would, you would use your rag and it would, you would wet it and you'd buy, I'm going to see if I can still do this, sorry. I, te I teach this, this is funny, if you've ever gone in the military, you've had to do a duck walk in the United States, but most people can't. But you get down and you bend your knees and in the military, in the Marine Corps, we had to do this a lot, right? Your hand goes in the low back. And in the Marine Corps, you had a little broom, a brush, a hand brush. And you clean, you clean like that. But in the martial arts schools, and the reason probably, like especially the Japanese schools, the Korean schools, those guys were all in the military. Martial arts, most people don't realize that like sensei or uh, the master and all the, the belt stripe system, that hierarchy, that comes from the military. That's not, that's the big contradiction of martial arts. There's the Zen, we are everything, we are all one, we're all the same, we're all equal. And then there's that Confucian system of hierarchy. I, I started the day before you, so I'm always your senior. And I mean, it, it serves a purpose. But the point is, 
a lot of the military stuff that we did then we do now this ringing out clean 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 with your rack and then get it wet wring out all the dirt wring out all the water do it again and all of that starts to really build power in your um, forearm and in your grip meaning your wrist how to strengthen your wrist so that when you punch which brings me to knuckle push-ups and um, knuckle push-ups will not injure you unless you do them extremely sloppy and fast we're going to the floor again Let's see if i can get you down there don't get nauseous but if i'm down here like two two tight fists and i want i want my elbows to come next to my body I, I'm, you're not going to do knuckle push-ups out here these regular push-ups these are okay that puts too much pressure on your shoulder any kind of push-up if you're not strong you should always start here so here is first then you make a fist and you turn it like 45 degrees, body straight, eyes straight. Take your time. As you know, I love to say slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Coming back up. Don't rush it. There's no reason to rush it. Do three at a time. Three, rest, three more, rest, three more, rest. Go until your wrists are super tired and worn out. Rest and then do some more. Uh, where is it? Because I was dream I was dreaming of this yesterday. I can't believe you asked me. It was Phil. Phil asked me, right? About strengthening. I was just thinking about strengthening. The um, these are getting a little bit more advanced. I, I have these new organizers that I've been trying to get everything organized with. See those battle ropes? Battle ropes will give you wicked power in your grip. I'm not going to show you those now. I do have a battle rope workout. If you go to my, if you look, search on the channel for a battle rope workout, you can see what those look like. But you need a levered weight. The term is levered weight. And I'm going to show you that what simply, what that means very simply. It's our kicking club. Here it is. This is a 10 pound sledge. Or maybe it's eight. Yeah. Here it is, you can see through the rust. Eight pounds, yeah, thanks Phil. Eight pound sledge with the rest of it um, on the bottom. Oh, well, I wanna say thank you to Celtex. thanks for being here. From here, with your arm extended, now I'm starting, I'm not starting heavy. I started light years and years ago. I do this a lot, so I can go heavier. Choke it up, and if you don't have one that's cut down like this. It's gotta be 10, this is heavier. Oh, this one doesn't say, this is a 10 pound sledge. <laughs> you can see, maybe it's more than 10, but this is heavy. So the key is straighten your arm so that you can isolate those muscles while also building strength in your shoulder. So go forward to the side, to the other side. Now, this is the levered weight, meaning that one side's heavy, the other side is long. It doesn't have to be uh, this. If you have like an old style, like a, like a bar, you know, you have these old bars or whatever, you can, yeah, just using your bow is going to strengthen. Using any of your martial arts weapons, you're going to get really strong. Yeah, that's a sledgehammer. Or what? The, that, those other two are sledgehammers. Um, you can use a ball peen hammer. You can use a, if you're, a, you know, a farrier's or a horseshoe, like a blacksmith's hammer. Anything that's got a little bit. Or just take a bar and one of these weights. These weights are usually pretty easy to find at, like, garage sales or... It used to be everywhere. You go to the, a lot of stores now. Go and start with a light one. Get a two and a half pound. And you put it on the end. And then tape it. You put it on a stick. Or if you have one of those dumbbells. I don't have any down here. I used to have a whole bunch. And then you just practice. It's not going to work very well. But practice the same motion. Now these you can buy. Right? And you see these. I'm sure you've seen them. You roll it up. There's that weight. 
Yeah, you'll find them for sure on Amazon and then roll it up. So Phil, you can get this and you can do this and roll it up or you can make this, right? Take um, an old broomstick and then you just have to anchor the, uh, the rope there somehow, either drill a hole through it or put, I have to move it so he can walk by. Go ahead, buddy. Put, put something in it so that you can, you can roll it up, right? Or tie a knot in it. Maybe duct tape it a little bit and practice that way. Yeah, it, it, exactly right. One of my very favorites of all time, as a lot of you guys see and know, They are Indian swinging clubs. This is a two pound pair, also a, late, a weighted lever. So you can practice this way. And then you practice the swinging. All of this is getting, and then you practice your mill. And then you practice turning and twisting. There are a million things you can do with this one. You start practicing these. This one is five pounds. So now you have a stronger you know, more resistance. There's a, a 10 pounder. And as you go up in weight, you can do less and less of the fancy spinning, but you can get so much power. You can add in a squatting motion, go hand to hand. And all of it is building strength in those wrists. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't share my kids' information online. Um, the last thing is, the, um, for obvious reasons, I think you know, the world is, a, is becoming small enough that kids, kids don't belong in adult videos. So that's what I do. Um, yeah, so I, thank you, I appreciate that. So I, I spread my fingers this way. This is the last thing I'm gonna show you, but this way probably will build your strength let me show you two things. This will build your strength the absolute most. You're going to get stronger, faster. And I need to lower the angle of the camera again. But I love body weight workouts more than anything. When you do push-ups, put your hands in different positions because you want to build strength in the wrists. Fingers apart, fingers together. Hands turned a little out, hands turned a little in. If you turn them all the way to the side, then you really start to build power in the um, upper arm. But, it, it, it's, and it's good because you're gonna have, your body's gonna be engaged in a plank, you're gonna be building core strength, you're gonna be building strength in the chest, for the blocks, for the strikes, for the, all the weapons work, in the shoulders, in the upper arm, in the back, everything is getting a workout. When you put your hands on the floor, start, like I said, fingers apart, slow, but then you can go down, push straight, go side to side. You can do these blast off push ups, and all of them will be engaging that wrist and building the strength. But my favorite, one of the best, one of the, I saw the most growth in my wrist strength when I started. To do this, I get in this nice easy stance, one foot in front of the other, the hands here in front, and go slowly to the floor. And I'm gonna kick up. When you go down, practice pushing your fingers into the floor in your handstand. The more, and then the longer you hold it. And handstands are mostly about balance. Less about strength, but you're gonna get really strong. You're gonna really get strong in those wrists, forearm and fingers, shoulder, back, all that. But these are all grip strengtheners. Like I said, the rope, the battle rope is one of my favorites too. But if I had, if I had nothing, no equipment, no sand, no sand to pound or grip and pull, no rags to rinse out, right? I would spend all my time pull-ups chin-ups, split grip, and I use rings, these rings here, and or um, I'll go to the park, the park's around here, I go to the kids' monkey bars, and then turn to the side, 
I, I like to use because the, the tubes are bigger. It really works your hands. The more, like the thicker it is when you do it, the more grip strength you're going to get. Just do pull-ups. If you can only do one, do one. If you can only do one and <laughs> have to jump, get yourself up. Go down slowly. Do it again. Do it again. Get out of your comfort zone and you'll never grow. And then drop down. Do one pull-up. Do three push-ups. Do one pull-up. Do three push-ups in a different position. Do one pull-up. Do three push-ups in a different position. Do one pull-up over and over and over again. And then when you're done and you don't have any more juice, go slowly to the floor and kick your handstand. To hold it, point your toes, toes straight up, lock your toes, reach. You'll start to get those shoulders in there, but the whole time, this is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So they get that grip of steel and then your guard, when they punch you, they're not gonna hurt you, it's gonna hurt them. You guys were awesome. Again, if you wanna win one of these two-piece bows, I'm having a contest, if you're a virtual member, you don't have to pay anything. Those of you who are um, on YouTube, you join on YouTube, thank you so much. You join on Patreon, thank you so much. Go to my website if you haven't joined yet. Send me an email on the bottom. It says contact me, passwinola.com. Send me, I'll enter you, I'll put your name in. Everybody will get one shot and then we'll pick one at the end of the month, or not at the end of the month, April 15th. That's tax day here in the United States. What a perfect day for me to give something away. I love that. April 15th, I'll send one, or I'll pick a name, and then I'll, I'll find a way to get it. If you're not here in the States, I'll find a way to get it to you. Or I'll get you something that's um, the same thing where you are. I'll, probably, I'll figure out how to get it to you. I know how to do that. Um, I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Thanks again. Oh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already, and share this. I want to I build this. This is our community, your community, my community. Let's build the community. Thanks again.